Okay, this is a do-it-yourself video on how to change the brakes and more importantly, lots of people have done that and there are probably other videos on the brake pads, but uh, I'm going to talk to you about how to change these slide pin bushings in the caliper uh, mounting bracket, which uh, is new to me. So a little bit of background on it. I've changed brake pads on cars for whatever, I don't know, long two decades, 25 years maybe. And I bought, this time I bought new rotors and pads all as a kit. And I'll post in the, in the uh, comments or the description of this video, I'll, I'll post the product that I bought off of amazon.com. And it came with new discs, it came with uh, new pads, but it also came with bushings for the caliper mounting bracket. So it was, I'd never seen that before. So uh, this video is gonna talk generally about how to change the brake, brake pads and discs, but more importantly on how to change those slides because that's probably something that not, the slide bushings, because that's probably something that not everybody has encountered before. So I've got the vehicle jacked up and safety stands under it, took the six lug nuts off of the wheels and got the wheel out of the way. And then I, for illustration purposes, I have uh, already removed the, the caliper off the mounting bracket, but basically these caliper slide pins, you have to take two of these bolts out and they're T55 heads on them. Don't try it with a T50 or any other size. Make sure you have the right size because if you don't, you'll round them off or, or break your tool. And so the right tool is this guy right here, T55. And they are very difficult to come out of there. So I use a 24 inch breaker bar and even then it, it required some effort to come, to come out. So I got those two pins out. I took the caliper and I put it up out of the way here. And then the brake pads slide off of each side of this mounting bracket. And there are chrome, um, chrome little plates that the brake discs slide on. They're chrome, uh, sorry, stainless. And they're stainless so that they don't rust, so that the brake uh, pads can freely slide on them. So then I took these two 18 millimeter bolts out that were holding the bracket in place, one here and one here. And now I've got the bracket in my hand. Now, come on over to the vise here. Okay. So clamp this bad boy. It's kind of a hard thing to clamp because it doesn't have really good surfaces to clamp on. Clamp can't, clamp, can't clamp on this because it's kind of curved and fragile looking. And then anyway, I find the best place to clamp it for this job is right where the bolt threads are. Okay, so I got that bad boy clamp, and then it had these things, these little rubber doodads that the pins went through, and it kept moisture off the pins. Well, to get them out, where's my little this guy? Get them out. I pounded flat screwdriver between the bracket and the and the little metal cup there. And they come out, the rubber comes out, and it's got this metal cup as well. So don't worry about damaging it when you get it out. You're going to throw it away anyway. All right, so that's it. Now, so now you're left with this little hole here. But the hole that the, the um, guide pins go in is, you know, it's, it's that deep. It's two and a half inches deep. What's in there, here, I'll show you a picture of the new one. What's in there is a bushing like this. It's plastic or... Maybe even rubber. I guess it's probably rubber. Yeah, it's rubber. It's uh, it's like this, and it's got grooves in it. And the only thing I can imagine why the grooves are there is because the guide pin goes in the center. This bushing goes into the, the hole where the guide pin is. It goes all the way in. And as the guide pin goes in, you want somewhere for the air to escape. So that's what I suspect those little grooves are for. There's three of them and uh, you want to be able to get the let the air escape so the pin can go in so that's what a new one looks like now the tricky part is how do you get the old ones out because they've been there for a long time and they really don't want to come out of there so the, I, cut, I tried a couple of different things and i'll show you this just so that you don't bother wasting your time i had a lag bolt which i don't have in front of me um here it is maybe Hang on. There we go. I had a lag bolt like this. And 
I threaded it into that rubber thing and tried to pull it out, but it just stripped the rubber on the inside. It wouldn't come out. So that idea didn't work, and it was a bigger lag bolt than that that I used. Then I took a drill and two long wood screws, and I screwed it in between the bushing and the outer metal surface. And on the other side, the bushing and the outer metal surface, and I used pliers and pulled the screws out, and that worked for one of the bushings all right. But the better way that I learned was to use a torch and heat this whole area up here. Not, you don't have to heat it red hot, but you heat it up until it starts to smoke a little bit. And that will just kind of liquefy the part of the bushing that's touched by the, by the metal. And then, take the drill bit that is just the right diameter of the hole. And you do that and it'll just, that bushing will just come out in little bits. And it's, here, here's a couple of pieces of it right there. Just comes apart. You don't worry about wrecking it. You're replacing it anyway. And then you can use this drill bit to clean it out. And I'll try to tell you this exact size. It was a 15, 30 seconds drill bit. And that seemed to be the biggest I could get in the bore. So, uh, all right. So, sorry, hang on, hang on, hang on. So you clean up the bore, and you take your new ones, and you just stick them in, and use the back of this drill bit to kind of push them in. Push them in until they bottom out. There's a little bit of crud still in there. And actually, Jay, you're, you're just showing back there. There's no hole back there. Like, there's nothing there that you can use to push the old bushing out. It's, it's intended to be solid so that you don't get moisture in with those pins. So now you've replaced the pins. Okay. Part two is replacing these old guys. So, best thing to do for this is open your vise up big, big, big. And I had a socket around here somewhere. Where's that? I believe it was a 21 millimeter socket. You see it anyway? Of course. We'll make it. Oh, here it is, right in front of me. Okay. So the best thing you do is you take. You don't want to just pound on this rubber because you'll damage it. Take a 21 mil socket. You kind of. Work this little guy in here. Okay, so now you can pound on the socket and it will drive that little cup in without damaging anything. Except that, except that. Yep, all right, all right, hang on. Want to be difficult. Okay, try this again. And just gently tap them in. They go in. You want to get them in straight, not like I just did. Anyway, I guess if people on YouTube want a professional video stage. Seek out the videos made by mechanics, audio visual experts. This caliper bracket is a real nuisance to clamp. I'm kind of. It's really giving me a hard time here. Sorry, folks. Okay, well anyway, I think the video is going to stop running, but basically you pound these guys in like this and bottom them out and then you're done. Okay, so, well, there's a little break in this video. <clears throat> it's been a, about a week since I filmed the first part of the video. And uh, the whole point of these videos is to teach you something so that you don't make the same mistakes I make and you can get your do job done faster. Any of you that were watching the first half of this video probably recognized a rookie mistake I made 
when I was pounding in the, uh, the socket over top of that bushing, it all seemed to go pretty well. Um, but after I was done, I realized that I had torn, not bushing, but the seal, I had torn it. So hopefully you can see that on the camera right there. And I did that because you want as small a socket as possible that can fit over there so that you push the metal, um, like the metal housing in uh, without bending it. But this socket is quite tight to that rubber gas or the rubber seal and it didn't slide up in there all the way and I pinched it and cut it when I found it in. So I bought another set. Um, the, the initial set came with the brake pads and all that stuff, um, but I, I wasn't going to put the, the brake caliper bracket on with that, uh, that torn seal. So I bought this other replacement set of bushings. It's like 13 bucks and there's the part number it's made by Wagner. And it comes with two of those bushings and two of the seals. So here's the new one and uh, I'll show you how to get the old one out and I'll show you my smarter trick now. It's all about evolution, I guess. So let's get this guy out. Okay, so that's the old one out. <coughs> and now what I'm gonna do to make sure that that doesn't happen again, I've taken some silicone lube, just a little bit, and I've sprayed it on the bushing. And now the bushing slides into that socket much easier. It doesn't kind of pinch, it just slides right in. So that's good. And since this is such an awkward device to clamp in order to pound, I'm going to use a different approach now, which is a much more sensible approach, I think. You won't be able to see for a minute, but just a second. I'm gonna press it in, much more controlled. It's easier for me to drive it in straight. I should have done this in the first place. And, uh, but I guess that's how we learn. And it's also hard to do this with only two hands. So quick check to make sure there's no chance that the silly thing is pinched before I crank it in there hard. I'd say it looks pretty good. Don't make this thing with any flat surfaces. It's not easy to clamp. Da -da -da. Like that. And now we take this off. And look, no torn seal. So that is a much better way. So if you folks Want to see how I did that? I took a 21 mil socket, lubed up this really well, and clamped it just like that. So hopefully you saw it getting pressed in there. It actually went in kind of crooked a little bit at the beginning, and then I just readjusted the socket, and all was good. So the other thing I'll show you now that I've got this off, and the seals are in, and the new bushings are in, so it's ready to go back on. <clears throat> the brake pads slide on these uh, ridges right here, and it's important for them to be able to freely slide. So in order to allow that to be free all the time, even though this, this mount will rust, these stainless steel, and they're dirty now, but these stainless steel covers kind of go over those ridges and then the pads slide over the stainless steel covers. And since the stainless never rusts, the, the pads don't bind to the stainless steel covers. The problem is over time, corrosion builds up underneath these stainless steel covers on the bracket and it, what it causes is this, the cover will come away from the bracket and towards the pad and it will eventually pinch the pads. So it's important whenever you are changing pads, a lot of kits come with these covers and that's great. If, if they do, throw your old ones away and clean this with a wire brush really, really well, get all the corrosion out of there so the new ones just snap in place beautifully. Even if the new ones don't, even if your brake pads don't come with new ones, I'd still say take these off, clean the corrosion underneath, clean them underneath there and put them back on and that way and then put some some uh, caliper lube or anti seize on there so that your pads just stay free and that will extend the life of your pads and improve your fuel economy so the purpose of this video was not really to show how to change brake pads because there are tons of videos that talk about that in the early part i talked about how to remove the uh, 
the caliper pinch bolts and the uh, bracket for, for brakes. Um, and so you can just kind of refer to that and go in the reverse order. The, the main part of this video was to talk about what is not easily found on YouTube is how to replace these seals and the bushings. So good luck with your project and uh, I wish you well in do-it-yourself automotive repair land.